Hey, what's up Ballpark? My name is Nathaniel Mon. In this video, I'm going to be talking about getting sponsors and what to do once you have sponsors. So first off, I want to apologize for taking so long to make this video. I've been talking about it for some time now, but really just the past month's been crazy. Uh, we've been traveling, competing every weekend, so pretty much every week we're in a different country. And then we compete, and then travel, and then compete, and it's just been non-stop. So I haven't really had time to do it. And yeah, lately uh, I've been getting a lot of younger athletes asking about sponsors, how to get them, you know, who to talk to as an athlete it costs a lot of money, uh, especially if you're, you know, if you're self-funded. So sponsors are super important. They pretty much allow you to do your sport and they support you while you're doing your sport. I mean, it's so important to have them, especially if you're, you're in an individual sport or you're in a sport like mine where there isn't much funding coming from uh, government or... So before anything, because I'm making a sponsor video, I want to just kind of give you an example. I should do a shout out to my sponsors. Uh, so first off, thank you to all my sponsor sponsors, uh, Rosnal Nordic. That's uh, they provide me with my cross country boots and skis, the fastest skis on out there. Uh, they also make awesome downhill stuff. I just got a, a downhill setup from them that I'm super excited to. I haven't had the chance to use it because I've been in Europe all winter. But when I get home, I'm going to be definitely sending some some downhill skiing 2xu which is probably the leading manufacturer of of high performance compression and i'm not talking compression like you see on the nike shirts that are just like tight or whatever i mean true compression true recovery third party tested it's the real deal um, they also make a ton of other clothing so even if you're not looking for recovery or compression clothing they just make nice workout t-shirts uh, i have a bunch of i pretty much have all clothing right now is 2XU. Go check them out, they make awesome stuff. Start Ski Wax, uh, I use them obviously for my skis. They make awesome wax for pretty much any type of skiing. Uh, and they also make ski poles, so really light, really stiff carbon fiber poles. They're amazing, I love them. <laughs> Start Ski Wax out of Finland. Then there's Zach Nutrition, which is a, a small company based out of Quebec. Small company packing a big punch, they make uh, nutrition bars basically like uh, like a power bar but pretty small and really really good for during or before exercise I use them you know if I'm going for a long ski I'll throw a bunch in my little bag same with road biking I do all that, a lot of that in the summer and, and they're tiny but man they help a lot so Zach Nutrition then there's Rundle Sport uh, which is out of Canmore Alberta pretty close to where I live uh, they make roller skis and the real cool thing about them is they actually have dampers in the ski so when you push down on the ski, they flex a bit. Basically, it feels like you're actually skiing on a real ski because most roller skis are just a stiff piece of metal with, with uh, two wheels at either end. And it doesn't really simulate the feeling of snow or being on a ski that well, whereas the Rundle Sport skis really do. And because of the dampers, if you're skiing on a, a rough road or a bad road, they really absorb all the bumps. So you can pretty much ski twice as many places and it's a lot more comfortable and easy. Uh, then there's Mount Bora team wear. They're designing our race suits uh, for this year. Um, it's a little bit of a personal, a little bit of a team thing. Basically, I went out to them, reached out because we just didn't have any race suits uh, created for the season. I was like, hey, this is what we need. What's up? <laughs> and and obviously, they were, you know, it wasn't like that, but obviously they responded and, and we've kind of designed a really cool race suit that I'm really excited to wear and represent and then finally there's balanced health and sport therapy based out of calgary where i live um obviously i'm not home very much but every time i am i'm making sure i'm going in to see these guys uh, i see dr nadella he's amazing he can do pretty much everything from acupuncture to lasering to active release literally he uh he pretty much saved me when it comes to my concussion i mean he really was the one that brought me back into the sport and allowed me to to keep doing what i'm doing now so balanced health sport therapy in calgary amazing amazing guys there so i guess the thir first thing we need to talk about when you're looking for sponsors is being able to show the sponsors what you have so building your athlete resume and your athlete brand so if you just go to you know you get an email to a rep of some company let's say it's let's say nike because it's Sure, it's a big company, 
everyone knows Nike. So you want to be a Nike sponsored athlete. You get a contact from a friend of a friend of a friend or something like that. Email them, you know, rep sees it, reads it and goes, okay, who's this guy? Tries to find out who you are. Can't really find anything. Tries to find your social media, nothing really there. Obviously they're just going to respond with uh, no, like, or probably not even respond, unfortunately, but that's the truth. So what you need to do before you even think about having sponsors is create your athlete brand and your athlete resume. What do I mean by this? Um, basically, I'll use myself as an example because I like to think I, I have a pretty good athlete resume. Um, results not included, an athlete resume is basically everything you have to offer a potential sponsor. Well, that includes your social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook. If you have a website, that's in included in it. This is huge because before you do anything, you need to have this sort of resume as, as, as m more than just your email to say, hey, I wanna be sponsored. You send them, your, you show them this, and this is what they're gonna look at and determine if, if you know if they're interested in sponsoring you or not. So for example, I'll post below. Basically, uh, my resume includes of Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, personal, and I have an athlete page as well. Uh, I have a personal website. And of course, there's my YouTube blog, which I think is a really big one. Other than that, I'm also working at a retail store that actually sells a lot of this, uh, the products that I'm sponsored by. And then obviously I coach as much as I can when I'm back at home. And so younger athletes may see me using certain things and be influenced in that way. Now, I'm not saying you need to go and do all of these things. Uh, start little. If you're not big in social media, you know, that's not the only way to create your athlete portfolio. A lot of it is if you're someone maybe that is leading running clubs or coaching a lot of, of kids or... Uh, pretty much just an influencer to people that you know, you can try and show a potential sponsor that there's this huge aspect of you and you have this influence over a lot of people and that's something you should focus on. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all the social media. That's what I do. And I know that that's what a lot of other athletes do because it's the easiest way to reach a huge range of people, but it's not the only way. So you kind of got to do what works for you and then be able to present that to your sponsor. All right, so you have, you know, all these these social media things now. Now it's really time to get in contact with your potential sponsor. Doing that can be tricky. Um, so there's a few ways to get contacts. One, you know, if you have no idea where to start, go to uh, the contact page on website. Like go, uh, if we're doing Nike, go to Nike, look at contact. Go from there, obviously it's a huge company, so you're gonna have to do a lot of digging before you get an actual email. And you might just have to email the general inquiries thing and say like, this is who I am, this is what I'm trying to do, I'm just looking for some sort of representative to talk to. And you know, you might not get any response, you might get a response, you never know. Um, a lot of the times you, you can actually, I don't know if, if uh, that many companies want this to be known, but if you go on Instagram, you can just DM the Instagram page and you know, two out of 10 times you might get that response that just says, hey, this is who you should email. Pretty rare, uh, especially with big companies, pretty much zero chance of that happening. But if it's a smaller company, something like that, you, you, know, you might be able to get a response from them. That's definitely an approach. Probably one of the best ones is just kind of a friend of a friend. So maybe if you have a friend, if we're using Nike as our example, if you have a friend of a friend that works for Nike, you ask your friend for that friend's email. You email that friend asking him to give another email for their, their chief of marketing or the chief of sponsorship, whatever. You ask for that email, you go through the chain and you get that email. That's another way to do it. The next one would be asking an athlete, a higher level athlete in your sport or even out of your sport for the context. So that's what I did with, with uh, Rosnells. I asked one of the older Nordic combined athletes who's on the national team and was sponsored by Rosnell. I asked him and luckily he was okay with it. The one thing is sometimes it's not okay for the athlete to give out that email because it is someone's personal email and they might not just want to be sent around. So obviously don't go into it expecting that athlete, the older athlete to give out that contact information as it may not be up to them to do. So that's something to keep in mind. Some old uh, Slovenian man was trying to talk to me from like across the road. 
and I had no idea what he was saying. So, uh, just another day in Slovenia. So you have your, your contact info. Uh, what's the next step? Obviously, it's contacting them. Now, let's say you got this. Uh, we've been using Nike. Let's actually change that. Nike's so big. It's all right, Let's say it's a sunglass company. Uh, we'll call it just sunglass company. So you want you want these sunglasses. You think they're awesome. You want to get them. You want to represent them. You want to be a part of it. Because if you just message them, hey, I like your sunglasses. I want to be sponsored. Unless you are an amazing athlete, and I'm talking like you have really high results. You're competing internationally. You're on TV. You've, you know people know who you are just based off of your results. You know, maybe you'll get a response, but if you're a lot younger or you have yet to really become a world-class, high-performing athlete, you're most likely not going to get a response at all. Uh, what do you say? You know, for me, I basically send them my athlete resume, which is what we talked about in step one. So that's kind of body of it. And then the first thing I do the is send basically a cover letter, same, same idea as like applying to a job. For each individual sponsor, I create a cover letter. What I try and do is this is first grab the reader's attention and basically explain how I want and how I'm connected to the brand and how and why I want to represent them. So we'll talk about 2XU. Uh, I first came across 2XU well a few times obviously you start seeing them popping up everywhere and you see other athletes just at the gym wearing these tights with the cool X on you're like oh what are those so you look into it anyways came across them, thought they were really interesting, and then when I started working at uh, my store, or not my store, but the store I work at, we sold a huge variety of 2XU, and I, I really started looking into them and, and learning about them, and uh, I found out, like, wow, this this company's legit. Like, they really care about the product that they're making. We compete two, three times every weekend, and in between we're traveling, so recovery's huge, and I obviously wanted to have the best chance to recover so I can compete at a high level the next day and 2XU is for me the the leading and best way to do that that's basically what I put into my cover letter is what I just said there you say like hey you say who you are what level you're at kind of a little bit about your past and your goals going forwards and then you go into your connection to them and why you want to be sponsored by them and supported by them and you end with kind of why the two of you would make a good fit and that's something you really have to always keep in mind is that a sponsorship isn't a company you think is cool or whatever getting you giving you free product and that's it it's a partnership it's the same i like to think of it as the same idea as becoming an employee for that company they may be paying you in product or even money at some point but you have an expectation to give something back and so really with all my sponsors i'm trying to really show them that it's a it's an evil even uh, it's an equal partnership where both parties are contributing basically to better the overall and that's something I always try and keep in mind when I'm writing these letters or talking to reps. It's, it's something that I think reps really appreciate is that you're not just out there for the free stuff. You're out there to truly create a partnership and, and, grow, and grow basically together. <laughs> Another thing I send as well as a cover letter um, as well as my resume and this is totally optional but I like to do it is pretty much a visual presentation of everything I have to offer. So. I basically went on PowerPoint, threw in photos of myself competing, uh, threw in the stats like really quick, just like Facebook, this many followers, uh, YouTube, this many subscribers, this many views per video, like Instagram, this many followers, etc. Like really, really simple short form because sometimes reps are so busy they don't have time to read a two page essay about who you are and what you're trying to do. Uh, but flipping through a five page PowerPoint is a lot easier and it also really gives the people who may not know your sport or understand your sport it also gives them a visual rep representation of what what you do and what you're trying to do and how they're going to be able to advertise and then the last thing i do uh this is pretty much specific to my sport um but because we are on tv quite often uh, i actually have the tv statistics from last year's season uh, i got it through this and then through an athlete rep is a little bit of a process but yeah it basically just shows how many people are turning on their tvs to watch us compete every weekend uh, what countries etc like it, it really gives the statistical analysis of who is watching the tv for every world cup weekend so i'll uh, i'll post all these things below on my ballpark page just below this video so if you guys are curious 
uh, go ahead and take a look. Um, it'll kind of give you an idea and feel free to use it as a template. Uh, if you have questions about it, just obviously message me, call me, whatever you need to do. Okay, so you present that, you send that all in your email, and then you know you kind of cross your fingers because if it's a rep you've never met or it's email you just found somewhere, sometimes you're not gonna get a response and that's fine. Like it happens and it's happened to me countless times and that's kind of part of the process, unfortunately. But you know, no matter how good you are, no matter how good you think you are, how many Instagram followers or whatever, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes uh, companies aren't even looking for sponsors or they filled their their budget for spon or for sponsorship every year. Like sometimes you may not get a response. Uh, sometimes you may get a response and it's no. And then from there, you know, you, you can either just be like, oh, whatever, screw you guys. Or you can kind of, this is what I always do is, is respond with like, thank you for replying. I'm hoping, you know, I really want to be part of this. I'm hoping that maybe one day we can work together and I'll try again at a different point in time or something like that. You know, cause then obviously you're not burning a bridge. You're just leaving it open more or less. That's probably the most professional way to do that. And then sometimes you may get the, yeah, hey, we'd love to be, uh, you know, you, we'd love you to be a sponsored athlete. And you're like, yeah, sweet, I made it. And then you read and they're like, we'll give you 15% off. <laughs> and you're like, oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> no, obviously like that, that's gonna suck. And uh, I mean, it's better than nothing, but it's maybe you were hoping to get free stuff. Uh, and you're instead you're getting 50% off and you might just scowl and be like, oh, that sucks. And you know, maybe you'll use that 15% off on one purchase and then that's it. Don't go that way. Like really don't, don't burn that bridge. Say like, thank you. This is awesome. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that in the future there'll be more, but for right now, like, thank you so much for this opportunity. And then from there you give it all you got. Um, for example, Let's say, you know, that sunglass company responds to you and they say, we'll give you 50% off. Um, and then we'll kind of just watch you and like, for you, for you, might, you might think, use that 50% and maybe do one post. Like, no, like every time you use those sunglasses, uh, for me, it's like Instagram's the easiest way to do it because it's so, it's so easy. Use, take a picture of you using them and then tag them in it and just make that your story or make it even a, a real post and say like, hey, this is why I love this company. And I guarantee at least someone is gonna see that. And as you get better, as your social media develops and your brand develops and as your results get better, hopefully, maybe a year down the road, two years down the road, that sunglass company is, is responding to you saying like, hey man, like you've crushed it the last two years. Uh, you've really like shown us off and we love it. Here's, here's a contract. Boom, there you go. It, sometimes it takes work to get to the sponsors. Whatever it is, like just accept it and then work your butt off to, to really improve on it. Great, so you've got your sponsor, uh, whether it be a discount card, a coupon, whatever. You know, it might be a, a huge contract um, where they're offering you this much product in return for this. Like sometimes it's really formal, you sign your life away, uh, and that's like how it was with a lot of mine. And then some of the, a lot of the time, it's it's just like a verbal contract. Like, hey, we'll give you a box every once in a while, or we'll send you this every once in a while. Um, and in return, like, we just hope that you represent us well. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you it's up to you to really make it count. So I guess the next step is what are your obligations as a sponsored athlete? Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and make your own YouTube vlog. That's something that I did, but also it's partly because I really enjoy taking video and and uh doing photography and videography so for me that really worked um it's hard right now with how busy it is but that's something that i did all summer and i really enjoyed it and i think the sponsors really enjoyed it as well i got a lot of positive feedback because obviously besides just a post of of me using their product it's they actually see me training wearing 2xu or skiing on rosmo boots or rundle sport for example you know stuff like that like i'm not saying you have to do that but it is your job as an athlete that is sponsored to represent the company as much as you can and as best as you can for me instagram's the best and easiest way to do it but i want to keep in mind quality over quantity i think sponsors appreciate a really nicely taken photo not just like a selfie like wow or something like that like you know a photo of you competing or training that someone else took maybe you have a friend and you just give them your phone and you say can you take this photo or you know for me i have a nice camera 
and I know how to use it so I can do a lot of that myself. Yeah, photos, visual rep representation is huge. Other ways to do it, I gave some examples before, but if you happen to work with other athletes or if you're on a team, your teammates like, hey, what are those socks? And you're like, oh, these are my 2XU compression socks. They're sweet, go buy some. That's one way, whether that be a teammate or just like maybe you coach kids, something like that. Uh, could be a coach, could be a random person on the street. Could be like me at work. I, I work there and uh, a little biasly, I try and push 2XU and, and Zach Nutrition and the, the companies that we sell a lot there. I'm still gonna sell the person what they need, but you know, obviously if I, if I can push them towards a, a sponsored company, I'm, I'm gonna, sorry, don't tell anyone. No, this is awkward now. Restart, refocus, refocus, focus. If you're going to an event, for example, at that event, try and show it off and then show your sponsor that you're showing it off. So if you're going to uh, a meet for volleyball, or I don't know if they call it a meet, I guess it's a tournament for volleyball. While you're at that tournament, obviously you're gonna have to wear your team's jersey or whatever. Maybe in between games, you're throwing on a hoodie or you're drinking out of a water bottle or wearing some, you know, you're showing it off. You're showing that you wear this, you're sponsored by this. Probably the best way to do it at competitions, I'm wearing all of my sponsored gear because one, I like it. And because two, I want to show it off to people. I want to show that I'm a part of this company and that the company is getting something out of sponsoring me. And obviously at our competitions, we have a lot of media following us. So it's really easy for me to just wear it. Photographer takes a photo of me. I use that photo they take and boom, there you go. It's, it's pretty easy, but obviously if you're in a different sport where there's not as much media attention, you have to do a lot of that yourself. So maybe it's asking a parent or friend to take a photo of you while you're competing. All easy things. They take a little bit to think of and until you're really used to it, it's gonna really seem weird and awkward and uncomfortable eventually it kind of becomes second nature yeah if you're not super into the media thing like i said or you're not really comfortable filming or taking photos of yourself that's not the only way to do it uh word of mouth is huge we already talked about that a bit if you can like if you're higher up in the in the sponsor and you have a really good relationship there could be like an outdoor show and if you're sponsored by a shoe company or something around and you say hey like send me like a bunch of demo shoes there's this uh this thing this show where i live and i'd love to like set up a tent show off the product and obviously that's like that's a lot <laughs> and you don't have to do that but i think even just like offering that or showing that that you actually care and that you're really trying gives the sponsor i think it shows the sponsor that exactly what i said that you care and that you're you're really trying to have an impact but anyways the sun has just set uh, it's starting to get a little bit cold out. It was like 14 Celsius today, which is crazy because it is February. So that's nuts. I think I covered everything. I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you found it useful. Obviously, if you have more, if you have more questions, just comment below. Uh, send me a message. Even book a, a, a time slot to talk to me. I'm always willing to give advice and help. Um, Cool.